Well, friends, we near the end of the journey on the non-parametric analysis, the last module in the in a long run of topics that we've discovered and discussed. The Krusical Wallace is the last test that we will look at in our non-parametric design. Uh, the Krusical Wallace is a non-parametric test of the null hypothesis that two or more populations are the same against the alternate hypothesis that the populations are not the same. Actually, what the Kruskal Wallis test does is mimics an analysis of variance, but from a non-parametric perspective. Uh, the Kruskal Wallis test will allow us to examine non-normally distributed and ordinal data sets to make comparison between the two or more groups of interest. So this is going to allow us to mimic a, uh, an ANOVA, but to do it with a non-parametric design with non-normally distributed or ordinal data, should we choose to do so. The assumptions for the kruskal wallace test are as follows. Uh, all assumptions uh, from the sets are all observations are independent of each other. Certainly you have to have independence. Uh, the dependent variables are at least ordinal. And they may be, uh, they may be uh, interval, they may be ratio, but the ratio, interval and ratio are, in fact, special cases of ordinal data. Again, I, I put the last one in that the distribution of the groups are equal. Uh, many researchers uh, list that as assumption. Others do not. Let's go on and look at SPSS and see if we can conduct a kruskal wallis test on the data set that we developed. Here we are, friends, back in SPSS in that data set that we developed previously. You will recall we have three groups. Uh, the groups are two-year, public, degree-granting colleges. One represents Texas, two represents Oklahoma, and three represents Louisiana. Now, we extracted four sets of data, the percent of total expenditures uh, in instructional uh, support, academic support, student support, and then others. Now, we're going to conduct some analysis on this and then do the Kruskal Wallace. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going, we're going to play again with, uh, play again with uh, uh, doing, uh, checking a data set to see if it's normally distributed. For this, we want mean, median, we'll get mode, skewness, and kurtosis, and I also want my histogram so that I can look at it. All right, here it goes, and that's the percent student support. Now, if you recall, we did this previously, and we already know, here it's conducting. My, I lift my cup to you. We already know that this data set has a pretty serious skewness to the left. Uh, kurtosis is pretty high. It's just not normally distributed. And we, I just love getting the mean, median, and mode. That's that old stat teacher in me didn't worth killing, but... I, I ran this first to remind you that in your protocol of reporting this, it's important that you demonstrate that your data set is non-normally distributed. I think that's, that's just very important. Now, let's go down and do a non-parametric test independent samples. Now, again, mine has already let me describe the data set. If you run across that where you need to do it, just do it manually. These four variables are continuous and group is nominal. So I'm going to customize my analysis and I'm going, uh, wait a minute, I got to, got to sign things, customize my analysis. My fields, I'm going to do percent of student support. I'm going to compare it across the three states. And the setting that I want, I want to customize my test. And since I have three groups, I'm going to run the Kruskal Wallace. Now let's let it go and see what it adds to the to the data that we've already done. Uh, the Kruskal Wallace was pretty quick. Uh, the significance of the Kruskal Wallace was 0.003. Examining the null hypothesis that no differences existed in the percent of student uh, support uh, uh, expenditures as a portion of total expenditures across the. Uh, two-year degree-granting public community colleges in Texas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. We reject the null hypothesis, which means for us that differences exist. Now, I lift my cup of coffee to you in praise. I want you to look at what you have. 
you have this this table where you're going to report on the skewness and kurtosis. You have uh, the the uh, the histogram, and you have the non-parametric design. The only other thing you would need to do with that is come up with your your uh, demographics for your groups. Hmm, wonder how we might do that. I think I'll just run that for you. If I were going to do that, I would do a general linear. Uh, uh, let's do a compare means. Let's do a one-way ANOVA. It'll be in that. Uh, let's do this, dependent list. Let's do it across groups. Let's tell it that we want the descriptives, and uh, we don't need the homogeneity. Well, we'll do the homogeneity. Now, the Brown, and For Brown Forsyth, and Welch also give you an option because when you run this with ANOVA, the, they get, here's, your, here's your descriptives. They give you the... Uh, the uh, uh, significance in a non-parametric design. And lo, lo and behold, the Welch is almost exact. No, they're a little, almost pretty close. Anyway, the non-parametric design is pretty cool. You could uh, give the power of the test if you chose to and so forth. Significance uh, of, of the uh, standard era. A lot of things that you can do. This is pretty cool, isn't it? Well, uh, let's go on and see if we can't finish up this video. Friends, you've made it to the top of the ladder. This is the last video in the in the non-parametric series, and the non-parametric series was the last in this uh, in this uh, course, which we uh, covered beginning with correlation, moving through factor analysis, linear regression, multiple linear regression, t-test, ANOVA, MANOVA, and then non-parametric design. Before I sign off, I want you to, to see me in my cap. This was given to me by my dear friend, Gerald Lee. Uh, the cap says, don't mess with Bubba. Now, I want to remind you that uh, for those of you that are not from Texas, that we kind of have a saying here, forget Texas, don't mess with Bubba. Well, it's been fun. I raise my cup to you celebrating your achievement. May the odds be ever in your favor. You have a great one. God bless you.